After the fires, about half a year after, I had to go to Switzerland to visit my mom. She was ill. And on that visit, I also uh, checked out on my old friends from the steel bands there. And just in the same week, somebody sent me an information about a grant application from Regional Arts Victoria uh, for community projects in fire affected areas. And sort of catching up with my old band members and having that grant application on my desk at my mom's place, I already all of a sudden put two things together and said, well, that's what we got to do. We have to apply for a grant and start a steel band in Marysville to get a bit of um, happiness back into our lives. And my friends in Switzerland were very sweet. They started to donate instruments straight away. So it gives us a, a sort of a, an island to relax, to feel good, to learn something new together and to play music together, which is very a nice thing to do. Now. 40 beginners? Yeah, I've got three beginners classes running at the moment. <laughs> the Pans of Fire continue to make a great contribution to uh, not only uh, the era that we've witnessed over this past couple of years, but more particularly to the future. They are the future, and I congratulate them individually, but particularly as a group for what they contribute to the community. It is a great thing. The production of the instruments was again a funny coincidence. While I was in Switzerland and donations would happen from pans, I realized that we really needed to construct our own pans on site. It was too costly and too difficult to ship them all across um, from overseas. So I started to investigate and an old friend of mine came out of the woodwork. He had heard that I was there and he is an instrument maker. He was actually one of the first Swiss people who went to Trinidad and Tobago and did an apprenticeship back in oh, the late 80s, early 90s to learn how to make those instruments. And he then agreed to volunteer and to come across, all the way across to see us in Australia and to work with us. And that's what he did. He started to work in our shed and volunteering his time. The steel pan started in uh, Trinidad and Tobago, in the Caribbean, um, has been invented by young Trinidadians using all kind of metal containers to do rhythm and music with. And, uh, Trinidadians discovered that uh, different sized bubbles would uh, make different musical notes and they took it from there and developed it into a, a fully chromatic um, musical instrument. There are um, basically four voices of steel pan to look at, the soprano, the alto, baritone instruments and bass instruments. It's a traditional Trinidad steel pan, it's called a single guitar, it uh, functions as a baritone instrument with limited um, tonal range, meaning there is basically a, a D major scale on it. Used to play chords, to strum chords um, in Trinidadian old-time steel bands, hence the name um, single guitar. Just play a few chords here. Got 
here is a soprano instrument, um, made and rough tuned. It will take me a few more hours to get it sounding really beautiful. Function as the functions as the melody instrument in a steel band. Okay, what we've got here is a baritone instrument which I just um, finished raw making. It means I I sank a bow like shape into the flat drum. I marked the layout, the note placement. I shaped the notes back, making them pop up. So kind of I grooved the circumference of the notes with a with a punch. I'll now flatten out the entire surface in between the future notes and cut the drum to its proper length. Uh, right now these bubbles are not tuned so they sound like this. We have a ball playing the steel drums and to be a it's just so um, uplifting being all together and playing something, playing an actual tune when none of us read music.